Here's an idea I had that's never been done before. Honestly, I feel like this might be the next big thing, and I'm surprised nobody else has done this before. Fuck. So my New Year's resolution this year was to get out of the music bubble that I've been in for the last several fucking years. I love Post Malone, Glass Animals on the weekend, but I can only listen to beer bongs and Bentleys 25 times a month before I get tired of it. I'm two months into it because I started in December, and I gotta say, I think I'm doing pretty decent. It's not like I only listen to those three artists, but whenever I'm in my car, I usually only listen to my big playlist. A collection in mass of pop music, rap music, and electronic music, mostly made by the same artist. The number of songs heavily outweighs the amount of artists on here. But down to business. I started off this month pretty mid. My cousin and I swapped artist discographies. I told him to listen to all of Kanye, and he made me listen to all of Radiohead. I listened to almost every Radiohead album in December, minus the last two. Starting off, I really didn't like it. Pablo Honey really wasn't unique enough for me to have any songs on it that I can actually remember, besides Creep. I like Creep. Do I think it's overplayed? Yeah, and I think there are far, far better songs made by Radiohead. So whenever I see this at the top of the charts for their most played song, it kind of rubs me the wrong way since the majority of the population hasn't heard the major bangers that would come down the line later. 7 out of 10. The Benz was a little bit better, but still, I can't remember most of it. My Iron Lung, The Self-Titled, and Just were the standouts on the album, and I really like those. The rest, I cannot remember to save my life. 7 out of 10. Still not the Radiohead that I really started to like. When Mr. Thom found that Roland 808 sitting on a Goodwill shelf, and we really started to see that with, OK Computer. Man, this album is overrated. But fuck, Paranoid Android, Airbag, Let Down, and Karma Police are all super duper good. Let Down was the first, oh shit, this is pretty good moment that I had with the band. And while the rest of the album is pretty good overall, I can't fathom how this is their most highly rated album, other than the influence that it had on incorporating electronic sounds into other genres besides electronica. 8 out of 10. Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. A few months before listening to this, I listened to Abbey Road for the first time, and I thought it was really good. But I was left a little disappointed about it, considering how many people hype that up to be the best album ever made. But this isn't about Abbey Road, this is about THE BEST ALBUM I'VE EVER LISTENED TO. Sergeant Pepper's start to finish had me in awe. My face has never been so scrunched up the entire time I listened to an album. I took a listen to the Super Deluxe version with the remixes, which really didn't change anything other than the clarity of the songs, some panning, and honestly everything just seems more punchy. I'd say it's more of a remaster than a remix, but this album kicks ass. My favorite song on there by far was Lovely Rita. Ringo's groove on the drums with a nasty open hat fill to the next bar is some of the most disgusting shit I've ever heard ever. And the mixing with Paul's massive vocals makes my finger wiggle every single time I hear it. The rest of the album slaps too, so I don't even have any high points to pick out because they're all so high. If I could go above a 10 with this without it being stereotypically fucking dumb, I would. 10 out of 10. Perfect album. Kid A. Back to Radiohead. I really like this album. It was the first Radiohead project that I can say I enjoyed most of it. Optimistic was my favorite track on this LP by far, and one of the only songs by them where I can actually understand what Tom is saying without looking up the lyrics. I love the tone in the guitar, the stratty middle tone with the octave chord really hypes up Tom's voice on this track. Speaking of vocals, this is the first album where Tom's voice didn't give me a headache. Over the last three albums, something about his voice just ruined most of the songs for me. I think it was just too whiny or something about it was maybe too nasally. I don't know how he switched his whole vocal style within a couple months of finishing OK Computer since they started working on Kid A right after. But thank god he did because I couldn't stand it before. And now I really dig it. 9 out of 10. Beer bongs and Bentleys. Yeah, I've listened to this album before. Many times. But it's just so good. It doesn't matter what season you're in when you're listening to this. If this album is on, it is summertime and you are about to go to the biggest rager of your life. Austin perfectly encapsulates this part of his life with this album. And for better or for worse musically, I'm glad he's in a healthier space in life right now because I don't want to lose this man. He's too whimsical for this world. Blame it on me. Best song on here. Don't ask. Me. Eight out of ten. Revolver. After my big blast out with Sgt. Pepper's, I was scrambling for another itch of that Beatles crack. The same cousin that made me listen to all of Radiohead told me to listen to Revolver because it's his favorite Beatles record. 
So I did. It's not as good as Sgt. Pepper's, but god damn, this album is good. Eleanor Rigby put me through a crisis for a week, and that wasn't fun, but fuck, that song is good. But, um, <clears throat> my favorite song on there was Yellow Submarine. I can't help it. It's so fun. It's so goofy, silly, and catchy. I love it when Ringo gets the sing because out of like the 20 years the Beatles were together, he only got to sing like 12 songs and he only wrote two of them. Uh... 10 out of 10. Needs more ocean ballads. Amnesiac. Another surprising Radiohead hood classic. Knives Out. Banger. Pyramid Song. Banger. Hulk. If it wasn't four minutes of the same raging ass bass, it would be really good. But even the funkiest grooves can be tiresome after four minutes straight. Life of a Glass House, major banger. But the first song ever by them that actually had me stop and think about how good it was, like Spinning Plates. Phenomenal song. Contender for my favorite Radiohead song. Gives me goosebumps every single time I listen to it. Not much else to say about the album other than go listen to it because it's hard for me to explain why I like this one so much. 9.5 out of 10. Their second best album. That feels good. Man, I was not expecting a lot from an album of the year must listen to album, but holy hell this LP rips. I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't fucking disco made in 2023. Jessica Ware, modern disco queen, dropped banger after banger on this record, having my shoulders shimmying and my fingers wagging the entire time this record was on. Listen to this album right now if you have not listened to it because you are missing out. 9.5 out of 10. Hell to the Thief. I like it more than Amnesiac, but I wouldn't say it's better than it. A Punch Up at a Wedding, A Wolf at the Door, and 2 plus 2 equals 5 are all songs I actively listen to, where I really only go back to the previous for Spinning Plates and Glass House, a type of record you would listen to on a car ride or while drawing. 9 out of 10. In Rainbows. I'm gonna say this real fast because I don't want to spend 4 years talking about this one. 15 Step Through Weird Fishes, 10 out of 10, Masterpieces. All I Need Through House of Cards, mid as fuck. Last two songs, phenomenal. The album really is a head scratcher for me because it's a 10 track record and I don't like 40% of the songs, but I still feel bad giving it an 8 out of 10 because the first four songs are phenomenal and so are the last two. But I don't know, I'll come back to it and I'll see if I can figure out something maybe more final. But for now, uh, 8 out of 10. And that's all I listened to in December that was noteworthy out of the new things. I gotta say my favorite was definitely Sgt. Pepper's, with Amnesiac being a close second. For the worst thing I listened to, it was Tom McDonald's new album, which I don't even really want to talk about because it was so terrible. Who knows what wacky things I'll listen to in January, but right now I'm going through Queens of the Stone Age, so that'll be a fun thing to talk about. And I've already finished all of Radiohead, so when I make the next video, I'll throw in a tier list of all the albums just so people can be really pissed off at me, which is right now. I was expecting to get this out before January, but it's February 6th right now, so honestly, I really dropped the ball here. January was a surprisingly busy month for me music-wise. I can successfully say I'm breaking out of my music bubble, and I'm pretty happy with that. To finish off the last two Radiohead albums, we have The King of Lynn. Well, I thought the overall Borderline EP was decent. I don't really see myself ever coming back to it. Morning Mr. Magpie and Feral were my top tracks on the record. I just wish the bass was a little calmer on Feral. That break in the middle, the song with the minimalist drums and the wide pad and the vocals just... <laughs> Mr. Magpie's guitar is slapping and I really like the lyrics on the song. The others on the record I honestly just can't remember at all. It's 7 out of 10. A Moon-Shaped Pool. Rather than retype this, I'm just going to refer to my album of the year review, so bear with me on this one. The most recent addition to Radiohead's discography, A Moon-Shaped Pool, marked the culmination of my journey through all their records and transformed me into a true Radiohead fan. This LP, now my favorite by them and one of my all-time favorites, stands out as a rare gem with not a single bad song in the mix. From start to finish, the album maintains a floaty and beautiful quality, traversing through a range of emotions that culminate in a heart-wrenching finale. Among the standout tracks, Full Stop earns its place as a favorite of mine, particularly for its seriously groovy break around the halfway point. The synergy between the guitars and drums is impeccable, creating a resonant backdrop for Tom's haunting vocals that play perfectly over the rest of the track. Glass Eyes captivates with its beautiful strings and piano piece that carries it to the end, leaving a indelible mark on the listener's heart. Identkit stands out for its overall groove, 
making it a personal favorite for its general appeal. The album's final song, True Love Awaits, takes the emotional intensity to another level. It stands out as one of the saddest songs I have ever heard, tapping in the raw emotions that I won't delve into here. The sheer emotional impact on this track is unparalleled, creating an experience like none other that I've encountered until revisiting this particular song. In urging others to listen to this album, I emphasize its profound impact. A Moonshaped Pool goes beyond just being a collection of songs. It delivers a cohesive and emotionally resonant journey that truly goes hard. In short, I really like the album. I mean, it's only one of three albums on Album of the Year that I've given 100, so 10 out of 10. Fuck you, it's their best album. Here's your fucking uh, tier list. I wouldn't say any of the albums besides maybe the first two are actually bad. The Benz was decent, but I'm not a big fan of it compared to their other stuff. All right, that's enough Radiohead for a while, so let's talk about Queens of the Stone Age. This album is mid as fuck going through this album was a major drag out of the 11 songs on this first lp i can really only say i enjoyed three of them if only how to hang a rope and mexicola all had that rip and turn that i expect from the band but the rest really showed that they didn't quite find their tone on the self-titled making them sound a lot like the first two radiohead albums in their own entire thing six out of ten where you fucking do this because i didn't press play i finished the entire fucking thing and now i gotta redo it did you know that there was a tunnel under ocean boulevard did you know that there was a tunnel under ocean boulevard I didn't like it as much as I did NFR. There's a lot of good on the album, but I just couldn't get into it that much. The self-titled track was pretty, and A&W was also a really good track, but other than that, I really can't remember a lot of it. I probably need to listen to it a second time to fully understand it, but for now, 8 out of 10. Decent album. Not excited for the country album that's coming up. Rated R. Oh, fuck me. This is good. Queens of the Stone Age took two years off from their previous record and came back with a raging album. Honestly, start to the second, the final track on this album is a banger. Straight heat coming off this record. But I don't really like the final song on it. I think it's just too long. 8 out of 10. Bag or Die. Oh man, this album makes me sad. After giving this album another listen, I can 100% say for certain it's bad. And I'm so upset that it's bad. Up until this album's release, I was a baby no money enjoyer. I thought his previous album, though still rough around the edges, showed Alex actually had some talent and wasn't just a TikTok has-been. The production from Lencher was fun, and I'd say 7 out of the 12 songs were actually pretty decent. But then this dumpster fire was released. Alex threw away all the potential he had into the fucking garbage in exchange for that TikTok clout. Why make a good song when you can just have ugly dudes and basic women thrust their hips to it and get paid for it? Ed Sheeran and everybody at the Grammys seems to think that's a good thing, so why shouldn't Alex No Money do it as well? Honestly, I can't say I liked any of the songs on this record, and even the production on it was weak. Alex, by some miracle if you're watching this, stop making TikTok dance songs. Try to bring some pride back into your music and actually make some real shit again. Or at least, you know, some better TikTok dance songs. Fuck. Songs for the Deaf. God damn. Oh my god, they did it again? I thought the up and coming Era Vulgaris was my favorite album by them until I listened to this record fully. Sure, I've heard probably about 50% of it off of just my shuffle playlist picking up that I like Queens of the Stone Age, but in full, this album is fucking phenomenal. Banger after banger after banger, except Hanging Tree, left my ears ringing by the end of this album, kicking late registration off of my top five and sitting itself firmly between beer bongs and bentleys and a moon-shaped pool please for the love of god if you have not listened to this album listen to it right now 9.5 out of 10 and that's all i listened to in january for my favorite record in January, it's actually a tough choose between a Moonshape Pool and Songs for the Deaf. On one hand, Moonshape is damn near perfect, but on the other hand, Songs for the Deaf fucking rocks, and I listen to it way more. Uh, 
Songs for the Deaf is my favorite album this month, but A Moonshaped Pool is right behind it. But by far the worst thing I listened to this month was Brown Boy 2. All 32 tracks of that fucking dumpster fire made me want to kill. Followed up by Bag or Die by Baby No Money. Don't listen to either of these albums if you value yourself. As mentioned, when I'm writing this part, it's February 6th, so the up and coming Kanye album might drop. So look forward to that. We also have to go over the rest of the Queens of the Stone Age discography, and I'll do a tier list for that as well, along with who knows what other shit I'll end up listening to before the month is over. So if you want to see that, make sure to subscribe. That's all I got for this video. You'll see me in the next one. Bye.